All right, so this is my review of the Flow X13 from Asus. It's this mini laptop that can connect to an external GPU that's equipped with an RTX 3080. It's a very powerful combination, and it's something a little bit different. And a lot of times when companies come out with something that's a little bit different, the product falls short of expectations, right? It sounds cool on paper, and then I get it in, and I review it, and it's like, eh, it's not that cool. This time, it's, it's something else. This is a very, it's just so cool. Let's get in. Now, this system is running AMD's new CPUs. It's their 5980HS. It's an eight core CPU, 35 watt, and it pushes out performance that I have not seen before. Not just in a mini laptop like this, but even regular gaming laptops equipped with Intel stuff. These new AMD chips are amazing, and this device is an incredible showcase of what AMD can do with their new processors. Super thin, super portable, and yet it crushes. If you have any kind of workflow that can take advantage of a lot of CPU cores, you're gonna like the performance on this machine. Now this is equipped with, well, there's two GPUs in here. There's the GPU that's baked onto the AMD APU itself, like the Radeon stuff, but I'm gonna focus on the GTX 1650 that's equipped in here. So this isn't the main GPU, like this is the big stuff, but if you're in a pinch and you're just using this laptop on the road and you have to do some graphically capable stuff, it does have a usable GPU. So I did some video editing and some light gaming on this and it's not bad. It's not gonna be as good as the RTX 3080. We'll get into that in a second, but it's usable. And thermally, it does really well for such a thin and light device. Now the exterior of it is made with a magnesium alloy. So the top panel and the bottom panel are both made with this tanky and durable feeling material, which I like to see. The inside panel, however, like the keyboard deck, this I think is a plastic finish. And like the top of it has a smooth finish, but the bottom area, like the wrist rest area, has this ribbed texture to it, so it makes this sound when you rub it the wrong way or poke at it the wrong way. But yeah, I think it's a comfortable keyboard to type on in terms of the keyboard deck. The layout itself, I'm partial to it. I like this kind of Asus keyboard layout. I've always liked it. The arrow keys are in a good spot and there's no weird shift positioning. It's a comfortable layout for a 13 inch device. And the backlighting is this simple white backlighting. You can't change the colors or anything of that sort. Now, the trackpad. This has a smooth finish despite the appearance of that ribbed texture again. It's a little small. I think it's somewhat expected on a device like this because the package is small, but most laptops nowadays have much larger trackpads than this. It gets the job done, but if you're someone who's very gesture dependent, like if you do a lot of stuff that's gesture based, you might find this thing a little cramped, but tracking and the button mechanics are good. Okay, let's get onto the screen. This is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio, so it's a little bit taller than your regular screen. It's thin bezeled, good colors, but it doesn't get bright. Like it's reasonably bright, I just wish it got way brighter. And especially for a premium device like this, I feel like it should be brighter. Now this one is a 4K panel at 60 Hertz. They do make a, if I'm not mistaken, a 1080p panel that is 120 Hertz. Now, if I had to give a recommendation, if you're somehow in the fortunate position of choosing between the two screens, I would definitely opt for the 1080p panel. Like you can play games on a little bit better, but at this screen size, 13 inches, you're not really taking advantage of a 4K panel unless you've got some very specific needs like your photo editing and that's like, that's all you do all day long, then maybe go for this one. But most people, I'd go for the 1080p panel. There is a webcam at the top. It's only 720p, but the image looks pretty clean. And if you want to, you can tilt the whole screen back all the way and it becomes this two-in-one tablet-y type device. Now, personally, I've never enjoyed using this type of computing device. I get it, there's a lot of people that do, like if you're a student, it has pen support and all that stuff. It's just not something I ever do. But if you want to, it has all the, you know, tent mode and presentation mode, all the things you would normally do with a flippy screen like this. Uh, let's get into the good stuff. Actually, before we get there, we gotta talk about ports because it's connected, literally. Uh, okay, so there's two USB-A, that's a lie. There's one USB-A and two USB-C. Now the USB-C on this side is part of the proprietary plug that connects to the external GPU. So if you're not connecting this thing, you can just use it as a second USB-C. You can power it through the AC adapter, USB-C. But if you want to, when it's time, you can connect it to this external GPU. And this is where this product really shines. So this is an RTX 3080 equipped 
box. It's very small. I think this is just under a kilogram. And so that's 2.2 pounds. And it's crazy powerful and crazy small and crazy quiet for what this thing is able to deliver. So to connect it up, you, it's as you would expect. You connect it into the port and you flick the switch to lock it. And then the software prompt will pop up. Be like, do you want to connect it? And you hit yes. And now you're connected. Now there is a bit of a wait time. It's like 10 or 12 seconds. It's not instant, but once the connection is complete, you're now connected to a laptop RTX 3080 with 16 gigs of RAM. And this thing runs with 150 watts of GPU juice right into it. Like the box is 280 watts. That's like to power the system and to power the GPU, but it's a 150 watt RTX 3080 inside there in case you're wondering. And performance is fantastic. It's super fast, like super, super fast. It can't keep up with desktop grade components though, right? If you grab a regular RTX 3080 from a PC build and you compare it to this, this is definitely slower than a regular RTX 3080. It's even slower than a RTX 3070, but considering what's going on here in a 150 watt package that is small and quiet and relatively portable, this thing is pretty impressive. The connection is proprietary, so you are dependent on Asus to make new ones of these, right? If you know, two years from now, you want to have an upgrade to your system. If you're so fortunate to own this thing, you need Asus to make another one of these with an RTX 4080 or whatever that happens in the future. You need them to do it. You can't upgrade this thing yourself, at least not from what I saw when opening it. We'll pop it open in a second. But the power cable or the connection cable powers the system as well as the bandwidth for the GPU. If you want to disconnect it, like you want to remove your laptop and leave from this GPU, you have to click it in software to let it know before you do the disconnection process. Now internally, you can see the power supply, it's 280 watts. It's actually pretty small for that wattage, but the GPU component cannot be upgraded yourself. It's like something that's completely proprietary to Asus, so you can't just upgrade this on your own unless you got some serious engineering skills. When you open up the laptop, the RAM and the Wi-Fi card are baked on. You can't upgrade or swap that. And the SSD, it's reasonably fast, but it's a shorty. So if you want to upgrade, if you want like a bigger SSD, it's not the easiest thing to find. Like there's definitely options out there, but they're not as common as like a full 2280. This is a 2230, I believe. The battery down here, 62 watt hours, and it's okay. Like. I feel like on a device like this, because it's got that two-in-one capability and it's theoretically possible that the student would want to bring this to school or someone would want to bring this to work, it doesn't last long enough for what I would consider to be like a full-day battery. I got six hours, just under six hours on my regular test, so screened at 250 nits with regular browsing and stuff like that. It's okay, but I do have the 4K panel. So if you had the 1080p panel, it probably go to seven and a half hours is my guess, maybe seven, but that, is battery life. And okay, I think that basically wraps up this review. I wanna talk about pricing and just kind of the value proposition of this thing. This is not a cheap product. I believe it comes in at $32.99. It is one of the most expensive laptop-based products I've ever had on this channel. But two things to keep in mind. Number one, there's no one else that makes this, a super powerful mini laptop combined with a super powerful external GPU. Like this package, as expensive as it is, is unique. And I guess number two, when you have the world's only this, you can charge whatever you want. It's unfortunate that it's expensive, but it really is like when you have the unicorn, you can charge a billion dollars to that unicorn. It's a very unique product and it's clearly not for everyone. But I also wanna present this other kind of scenario because I think a lot of people are looking at this and like, okay, for that kind of money, you could buy a really good laptop and build a really good PC for $7. You could just have both, right? So why would you have, why would you do this? Why would you spend all of your money on just one kind of super versatile, but very expensive product? And I don't have an answer for that. I feel like this is going to make sense to the person. Like there's gonna be people out there that see this and like this is specifically what I want or specifically what I need, not the laptop and desktop combination. They want this because it does provide a level of versatility that you just can't do with the, the setup that I mentioned previously. It is super cool, like unbelievably powerful for what this thing delivers and the weight that this whole package comes in, but it's so expensive. 
And yeah, I mean, if I had the money, I know I'd be tempted because this is such a cool product. Okay, hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. I'll see you guys next time.